Let me just reiterate that the term Fez is a Greek term. The original name of the headdress is the Tarbouche. So you embrace the Asiatic, coined by the Greeks, Fez, coined by the Greeks. You don't use the term Tarbouche to describe the original headdress. You reject the terms black and you reject the terms African. Wow. Now the Chinese described us as blacks. In the earliest of Chinese history, several texts and classic books spoke of the diminutive blacks. Thus, the Tuchi Li composed under the dynasty of Xiao 1122 to 249 BC gives the descriptions of the inhabitants as black with oily skin. So the original Chinese described the fellow Chinese, again, 249 BC, as black with oily skin. All right, so we're clear on that. And then we have many of these Moors who give their lectures or they give these you know, building in hallways and this other dumb stuff and actually have the audacity to get up on the stage with Dr. Ben. And it's really pitiful because Dr. Ben is one of the premier, if not the premier uh, name of our elite scholars and elders who brought us into the existence of us of embracing Africa, of us being black people, of us being uh, having a pan-Africanist mindset and embracing our true history. And what I saw was at the event done for Dr. Ben, I saw such blatant disrespect of people putting on a fez and, and pushing their own agenda at the blatant disrespect of Dr. Ben is really indicative of why somebody has to hold the line and not take that sellout mentality. Because I'm not made the same way that a lot of people are. I won't stand there and allow someone to disrespect Africa at the expense of pushing their own private agenda of blatant misinformation. So for you to, I looked at two Moors that were speaking about Dr. Ben. One of the Moors didn't say the word Africa a single time. He never mentioned Africa a single time, but yet speaking for about 12 minutes and never even said the word Africa. I mean, that's that's crazy. You know, the other person who was a Moor was speaking on Dr. Ben. He said the word Africa two times and one of them he was calling Africa America. So he wasn't even using that in the proper context and he spoke for over 15 minutes. And use the word Africa one time. And I use the analogy when speaking to my brother Elder Edwards. That's the equivalence of somebody having an award show for a cardiovascular surgeon and never even mentioning the word heart. Dr. Ben is Africa in that sense. He's someone who's dedicated and a professional and an expert in this terminology of Africa and why we are Africans. But yet you have people who don't even have Africa in their hearts and in their minds, which is their heart. So if it's not in your conscious mind, you are systematically rejecting that term verbally as well as spiritually. So you get up there and all you dumbass motherfuckers do is push your own private agenda. Blatantly disrespecting the man that is the embodiment of Africa. So you greet him and then... Since he can't speak for himself and nobody will speak properly for him, you blatantly disrespect him in order to falsely validate your fucked up false history. What kind of blatant disrespect is that? That just shows the poison that you have in your heart and in your mind and in your spirit for you to blatantly disrespect the terminology of Africa and at the so-called same time be giving a dedication to a proud African scholar who has changed lives all over this world. That's very interesting. Now let's deal with this myth of Scipio 
Africanus and that other bullshit that these Moors be pushing on people. They lie and say that the term African comes from Scipio Africanus. That is a bold-faced lie because the land was already in existence and called Africa before that cracker even touched down on that land. He's named after the land. The land is not named after him. But again, when you have that white supremacist poison in your mind, you think the white man is the root of everything. That he is the cause of us being black. That he's the cause of us being African. You'll argue that fact until you, you're dead. Even if the blatant facts come out and it's presented to you. Now, let's break it down. Cyprio Africanus. This is a picture of Cyprio Africanus on the coin. Cyprio Africanus. Cracker boy. That's Cyprio right there. Okay. Now, Cyprio Africanus was a Roman general noted for his victory over the Carthaginian leader Hannibal in the uh, Great Battle of Zama, 202 BC, ending the Second Punic War. For his victory, he won the surname Africanus in 201 BC. Now it's interesting that nobody even asked the questions, what was Cyprio Africanus' father's name? If the land was named after Cyprio Africanus, then it should be his family name. Well, it proves that you Moors are so poisonous and full of shit because if you ever took a second to fucking look up what his father's name is, is Publius Cornelius Cyprio. Cyprio Africanus' name, father's name, is Publius, P U B L I U S, Cornelius Scipio. S C I P I O. Now, it's a, it's a very good um, quote that was used by uh, the Queen Cameroon star. She uses the African proverb that until the lion has his or her own historian, the hunter will always be the hero. And that is very profound as far as the African wisdom and also wise of the Queen to share that information as a reminder to us. Because until we tell our own story in truth, then we look for our history to only be told by those who are in the conquering position. And that's what you have with Moors. You have those who don't see any valid history until the white man says, well, you don't come from Africa, you come from Mu. Well, it must be true because the white man said it. In other words, the white man's ice is colder, the white man's water is wetter because you're poisoned with the white man's supremacy up in here. We can go over, I mean, I don't even want to finish going through everything, but what's going to happen is we have our great um, Songhe Empire, and the Songhe Empire, we had three great civilizations of West Africa. We have the Ghana Empire, the Mali Empire, and the Songhe Empire. Um, and in the Western Africa, um, history, you have to understand that we were put into slavery by Moors that sold out. These are Moors that were not, did not identify at all with black people, with African people. They adopted the terminology and the mindset of their oppressor and it was mainly because they didn't have a home. Moors got kicked out of Spain in 1492. A lot of them went over to England. Some of them went to America. Some of them went to Mauritania. They sided with the Portuguese because the Portuguese promised them guns. They signed treaties and, and agreements with the Portuguese. The Moors took the guns. They then invaded Songhe, slaughtered up Songhe, took the libraries of Timbuktu and our many universities. Again, it's very important to understand. You have to understand your Songhe empire. Study that, please. Because when you understand how the universities were set up, Again, just because you're proficient in one thing, which might be law, does not mean that you're proficient in history.